unlikely to break my habits. Uh, this is not the So you can actually save and train the uh, That is the theory. So I'm going to make the training video and then save it and then decide how it looks and how it sounds and whether it's going to be useful to everybody. Let's send it to me. Okay. Uh, so we are talking about generation and electrical distribution. So we've got steam turbine. What is the output of the turbine generator? 23,000. What are the components of generator action? I don't know. This is a standard like uh, mechanic uh, equipment level test question. This is something that's going to come up. So you have the rotor. Okay, rotor, stator, exciter. This is not bad. So when we say the exciter and the rotor together, that's like a magnetic field, right? And then the stator is the conducting bars, and then the thing you're missing is the relative motion. So we have a magnetic field that moves across a conductor, and that creates a voltage. Got a rotor rotating that way. And we got an exciter. So that is like a loop of wire going around it, right? And that creates a magnetic field. And you're flowing the positive and negative, and we're going that way. So this side's north. I'm only like 70% sure that I got that right. So then that makes a magnetic field. It loops around like a button. Okay, then we've got the stator. How many phases of electricity do we make? 60. 60 what? Hertz. 60 hertz. That's not phases. But yes, 60 hertz is a correct hertz answer three phases. to a question. Three phase. All right. <laughs> three phase electricity. Right. We won't get to the three. Yeah. Five. We've got an A and a B and a C. And then this is like other end of the same loop, right? So it goes through the board and it comes back out. And that goes, so there's loops of wire that make up the stator going around the generator lengthwise. Does that make sense? We together? All right. So stuff that you're using that's never seen before. Alright, so when the north end of the magnet is by the A conductor, then it is at a max positive. So that's where this is right now. And as it turns clockwise, then the alpha voltage.
voltage is going to be going down and the Bravo voltage is going to be coming up. And then when it gets to here, then you're at that point. The Bravo is the maximum and the Charlie is, that's north, and the Charlie is negative but getting less negative because the south moves away from it. So that's three phase electricity. That's an exciter and a rotor and three phase conducting. And then books will like to say 120 degrees apart, which is obvious because there's 360 degrees in a circle and there's three phases. So it's not freaking rocket science, but something they like to throw in there. All right. So we got a positive and a negative uh, voltage going into that loop that makes the exciter. Where does that come from? How? That's what we asked them. Right. Alternating current. Okay, so we're making an alternating current, but the exciter has a direct current on it. Level. Yes. Hang on. Yeah. So on the second floor, there's an excitation breaker, and on the first floor, there's an excitation transformer. So what the so the excitation transformer comes off this twenty-three thousand. goes to a voltage control cabinet which puts DC voltage on the exciter. But yes, uh, you're talking about ground floor behind the compensate strainers? Yes, that is where the excitation transformer is. And that is taking this 23,000 down to 700. I don't know why they picked that number, but that, that's what they did. And then that goes to uh, a rectifier, which changes it from AC to DC, and then voltage regulator, which is trying to maintain that 23,000 on set point, and it will get stronger or weaker, whatever it needs to do to make that happen. All right. So we've got 23,000 volts, comes out of the turbine, and then goes to generator breaker, where that is physically at the plant. Flipper, you got it. Second floor on the west side. Second floor over by the 1A and 1B heaters, that kind of behind the condenser there. Over the ground? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So there is a ground disconnect and funny keys. disconnect which we shut during uh, maintenance because 23,000 volts even if you get like a you know a half a percent on that they'll still shock somebody pretty fucking good right that's still 200 volts and then so you ground out the thing so that none of that happens and then this guy is closed when running so you have another disconnect that creates an air gap between the generator and the yard. So it's still 23,000 volts. And then we go to the switch yard. Another transformer. Change colors here. This is 
the, the main transformer, the generator step up transformer, GSU. On day shift, we take readings on it, get the temperatures on the oil, on the winding, and check the oil level. And uh, what is it? What is the voltage on the high end side? Want this voltage so damn high? So you put it on it for it to suck it back out. Okay, that's true. Why did the people that designed the grid decide to make it so damn high? Because you want low voltage as you're driving out, so you compensate for the, uh, the resistance of the grid. That is a good answer. So the higher the voltage, the less current it takes to move the same amount of power. So the less current you have, the less heat losses you have. So the higher the voltage, the farther you can send it without losing it. Like pressure in a pipe, right? Volt voltage is to electricity as pressure is to water. These the auxiliary transformers. There's two of them. The high side is 23,000, and we're stepping it down to what? 20. 43. No, 4160. 41. That is one of the two answers. 13. 13. Yeah. And 13.8 kilovolts. Why are the transformers are reading different readings? Only one of them, the auxiliaries, they're always different. And they're doing the same thing. Is one of them doing something different? Or okay. All right, so they are doing something slightly different. Because if you think of your 4160 loads, we've got three condensate pumps. You're only running two of them. Right. You've got... Uh, five mils, you're only running four of them. No, that probably that isn't it because we're typically running Alpha Bravo, Delta Echo, and those are opposite sides. Uh, you're running one main compressor, and that's 4160, right? You're running two compressors out back, two out of three, that could uneven your load. So there's, this place is not designed to keep exactly even loads on both of those things. There's but both of them, each switch gears on each transformer? Yeah, so you got two transformers and two 4160 switch gears, right? Mm -hmm. So let's see. So both these transformers are not pushing to some central point where it evens out. These are separate switch gears, separate headers. Does that explain your question? But there's no 13.8 on the other. There, there is 13.8 there, there is 13.8 there there on the other one. That's why we separate equipment. So in case that one transformer yeah. you know, goes out, you know, there's one on the other side. So what is... Our 13 8 equipment. All the fan motors, uh, circuit motors, motors. Fan speed pump. So 
Heidi fan, primary air fan, four strap fan, surf water, and boiler feed pump. And so you have an A side. have breakers that you can rack out. Which which uh, one is the south or the east auxiliary to change one? Does it have switch gear four on or switch gear three? Don't know the answer to that. The, the readings on it never change. That's what because it's always the coolest. Yeah, I just wonder. It's it might, it's doing less work, I'm assuming. But like the other one, rings all over the place. But that one, 50 across the board, 48 across yeah. the board on the temperature. Yeah. It's going to be 50, 50, and 50. 48, yeah. 48, 48. Oh, yeah. It varies. It's only by two degrees. Where the other ones are, you know, the big tra main transformer is off the like tail Yeah. The yeah. 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 And the oil level is always different than the other one. And I, so the oil level is going to track temperature, so yeah. right. that, that makes sense, but I hmm, I have no idea why one of them would be giving you the same temperature rating. 20 all the time. degrees difference between, you know, this one, the east, east side and the west side, or more. I don't know. That's got where me fucked my up. questions were coming from. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I just always... I mean, I... So they, these things change with load, but I don't know why one would change with load significantly and the other one basically wouldn't. Uh, another factor is switch gear. Switch gear four is out at the RCD. Yeah, that's what. And so switch gear four usually isn't doesn't have hardly anything on it, just like lights in a computer, right? And then when they're unloading a train, then it has significant more amount of load on it. So that's a possibility. But I don't know, you stop me. Yeah. It's just always been there in my mind. Yeah, we're waiting for the right time to ask. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. All right. Transformers. What is a transformer? Converter. 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 What? What? Converter. Sending out the electricity or sending it down. All right. It's used to change voltage in AC electricity. Doesn't work on DC because it works by magnets, right? And so you got two coils of wire that are next to each other, but they're not conducting to each other. They're insulation around them, right? So one coil is the primary, and as the AC goes one way, it makes the magnet swell up, and as the AC goes the other way, the magnet collapses and then turns the, your north and south poles swap, right? So when one set of coils is doing that, it drives the other set of coils like a generator. Uh, and the main purpose of transformers is to set voltage either up or down. And some people act like these gen there's a direction to these things. There's really not. So if our uh, main step-up transformer, take when we are down, it takes in that 520 and changes to 23,000, and then that moves out over here, and that steps these down to 138, all the time. And if you're, if you're isolating something, and you're on the, the side that's normally driving, you ain't safe unless you open up the supplies coming from the other side. Unless there's no way to get hold of it there. But if there is, it can push backwards through these things. Uh, a good analogy for a transformer, a good mechanical analogy, is a gearbox. So it's like the you're getting the same amount of power on either side of the transformer, except for like whatever heat losses you got, right? But you are trading, you're going up in voltage and down in current 
just like you're going up in speed and down in torque. Did I get that right? Good. And if somehow the gearbox is being driven from the other side, you'll get movement on the other side. It's just part of how it one works. All right. We got 13.8 loads. We kind of mentioned some 4160 loads, but let's get a better list. What's powered directly from the 4160? Uh, Override. All right. So Mills had my position. Uh, plant air compressor. Atomizers, plant B. Okay. There's going to be a whole other discussion of plant B's. Common state pumps. Somebody said river water pumps, and that is not right. River water is for it. ECB pumps. Just crazy. The river waters are 4A, but the ECB pumps are 4160. Well, the. Yeah. You're right, that is kind of weird. Because you, you eyeball those pumps. And yeah. So many, and the river water is huge. Well, maybe that's the same way that the uh, electrifying plant A and B work. Because you get to think about where the river water pump starts. So on our plant site, we send this 4160 out to places and then transform it down to 480 when it gets there. And that's kind of the same principle. You're minimizing losses. So you've got 4160 that goes all the way out to the river water pump house. And then on either side of that building, there's a transformer that takes it from switchgear one and switchgear two down to 18. 1828 NCCs out there? Get me fucked up. All right, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what Grandma wants on this one mile is where we have to learn where they, which SUSs are where, which right. NCCs are what. But if you learn the NCCs, you can learn the SUSs. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, yeah. All right. So. I guess that's where we're going next. As we go from that hole, one more thing I want to add here. Switch gear two has an alternate feed breaker. Same way down there? No. Uh, on the north end of the switch yard, there's a transformer and a big disconnect switch. With me? No? The switch yard? No. North. Hang on. South end of the switch yard. Outside the gate. Oh, yeah, yeah. That big box. Yeah, there's a big box, oh. and then there's a smaller, taller box. And uh, those, the there's 480 going to the big box, and then that big box turns, steps it up to 4160, and then there's a disconnect switch, and then that is going into the building to switch gear two so that during outage, we can kill all this and work in the switch yard and still have lights in the building, still have a compressor in the building. Can't really have a compressor in the building. It's not enough to feed the 13A. So you can't have circ water, so you can't have plant air. But you can have a compressor out back. You can run the Charlie compressor back. Switch gear two. 
chapter 1, we go to SUS 11. S-U-S, not a transplant? S-U-S, which I guess I should have looked up what the fuck that stood for before I started this class. Uh, secondary unit substation? Yes, sir. Ah, all right. Uh, so that is like another one of these switch gears. It is not actually, it is, the transformer is not included in it. So you got a breaker. Going to SU. You got a transformer, and you got a main feed breaker, and then you got load breakers coming off of it. I think I said 480, but I'm going to go ahead and write it up here so it doesn't get forgotten. Every time I change colors, I'm changing voltage, but I don't have enough colors to do everything clean. Alright, so coming off of transformer. Four wheels easy switch gear one goes transformer eleven, steps it down to four eighty. Then you go to SUS eleven, which then will feed NCC one eleven and NCC one twelve. No, one one twenty one NCC one twenty one exists, but it's coming off of transformer. Or, Trans, uh, Transformer 12. You should explain the code real quick. Yeah, this is the time, isn't it? Yes. So first thing Jackie told me was to walk me around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, switch gear 1, Transformer 12, MCC 121. So if you drop the numbers off the back, so this this one at the front of MCC 121 is the same as the one in the switchgear one. Okay? okay. So then on the other side, you go to switchgear two and transformer 22 and MCC 211. If you look at MCC and you want to know which SUS it fires it like Jackie said. Like it's 121. Cover up the far right number, you know it's SUS 12. You know that's powered by, if you cover up the next number, it's powered by switch gear 1. Yes. And there's smaller transformers that come off of this. So it goes through a panel ATC uh, 1213, right? Oh. And so one, the panel 1213 is coming off of MCC 121. Which is coming off of Transformer 12 or SUS 12, which is coming off of Switch Gear 1. All right. Uh, there are some loads that are powered directly from the SUSs. Uh, in particular, the service water pumps and the Wastewater pumps, I know, come directly off of the SUS. They're not coming off the MCC. Um, what one? Why? Yeah, because know. they're bigger. They're, they're like, uh, like the, the fuel. Because I know it's, it's kind of like a, it's a 480. Down there, was on issue is not the fuel or what was the name of the rotary air heater. One of those, one of those motors. It's kind of like it's kind of like a thirteen eight where you gotta crank it out, but it's not as big as a thirteen eight. Okay. Yes. So transformer thirteen. I think I'm fourteen. Alright, so 11 and 12 are in the turbine, 
13 is in the boiler. And you got an MCC on the fourth floor and then one up on the tripper deck on the 12th floor. So you got a 131 and a 132. And you got a 231 and a 232 on the south side. There's 14. Goes to 141, 142, and 143 out of AQCS. 141 and 142 are right there. 143 is up in the penthouse. And then uh, I don't know why, but we're missing 15. I don't know where it is. Uh, 16 and 17 are out at the uh, coolant tower. And then 18 is a river water. What you got, Danny? 17 L stuck in the bowl. When we just backed it, you just backed that, wasn't it? Transformers 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 14, 16, 17, 18. Transformer 11 goes to MCC 111, 112. And there's something else that ties in on that one. Does anybody know what that is? Ten by generator. Correct. Ten by diesel generator. So there are, so there's four MCCs down there in the, the second floor of the switch. Uh, I guess by 11 and 12, we got some out MCCs. Yes. Is that the MCC that the breaker for the generator is on? Yes. No, it's the SUS that the breaker for the generator is on. It's on the ground floor. So oh, that's an SUS. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm no, I know what one we're doing. I don't know what it is. Okay. All right. Now I'm caught up. All right. So coming off of switch gear two, going to transform twenty one, SUS twenty one, MCC two eleven. And the booster fire pump. Four to one sixty loads, main electric fire pump. Between SUS 11 and SUS 21, there's a tiebreaker. So all of these things have a feed breaker on the 41 to 60 side, and then you get to the SUS, there's a main breaker that goes to the rest of them. Essential bus. And you'll hear essentials. So, what are the kind of things? Okay, so MCC 111 is in the turbine building, second ground floor. MCC 112 is in the boiler building on the feeder deck. 
and then 211 and 212, same thing. Uh, urban building and pier deck. So what are the kind of things that come off of the essential bus? Lube oil pumps. Lube oil pumps. Main lube oil, steel oil, lube oil pumps for all five pulverizers, um, A and B lube oil pumps for each of your six fans. Audible water pumps come directly off of it because that goes to eye wash stations and that is considered essential. Uh, same thing we talked about little power panels. Little power panels come off these things too. And so uh, that's where you get to the elevators are considered essential. Not so much because we don't want you guys walking upstairs, but because we don't want you getting stuck in the elevator. I would bet that they were off the 121 type of bus. That they are not essential, but they are turbine building. So, but I, I don't. No, I think it's not. All right. Um, Rotor air heaters. Those motors come off of the. 122 and 2, yeah, 122 and 222. 112 and 212, sorry. That might be it. That's definitely most of it. Yeah, it could be essential, unless. Boiler essential is everything on the freighter deck, right? Correct. <coughs> So, on a loss of power, we're running, and all of a sudden, this breaker comes open in the switchyard, we lose 500 kV coming in, that means there's nowhere to send our 700 megawatts, 675 megawatts, so our turbine knows that, so it trips that breaker, and now all this bus just went dead. When the system sees zero voltage here, it go ahead and it opens those breakers and then it starts the diesel generator and syncs it up and then it sends a start pulse to all the lube oil pumps that are out parked out because they might have stopped. So they all get a start signal. And then if you remember how I was talking about transformers can go either way this diesel generator could conceivably, I mean, all these disconnects open, but if they didn't open, then it could backfeed and push voltage where you didn't want to. So when we're doing lockouts for the outage, when they're trying to lock out things so they can work on the 23 kV, you have to lock out the diesel generator or you have to lock out, you have to run the diesel generator and isolate the essential buses from everything else. Of another load coming off of MCC 111 and 211, and that is the battery chargers. I think I got this up somehow. I wasn't ready for it. But the good news is I have plenty of space. All right. So, battery. We've got two battery banks that are both 125 volts DC. Then we have a switchboard coming off of those, and some loads tap across just half of it, and other loads tap across both and use 250. So what, what are 
are some examples of the DC loads? All right, uh, almost. So it doesn't quite go to the DCS, it goes to inverters. Inverters. Well, yeah. The, the breakers are in the, the same room that has the inverters. They're in the, in the, you've got battery chargers on one side of the room, you got inverters on the other, you got this switch gear on the same side as the battery chargers. So inverters, which then go to 120 AC to the DCS. There's also loads that come off that go to the switch gear. So all the switch gear that is remotely operated gets signals from the DC bus. What else comes off the DC bus with actual moving parts? Emergency uh, loop oil. Emergency loop oil and emergency seal oil pump. There's like two or three other little panels that come off this, and I, oh, the exciter. Before the exciter is powered from the uh, trans, the main, the 23 kV power in itself, it gets its initial spark off the DC bus. I don't know what else. Uh, Battery chargers. But this is going in, not out. And this is coming off DC 111 or 211. Where they charge it at? Now, if you go into that inverter room, on the left hand side, there's big boxes oh. there. On the right hand side is the inverter, and on the left hand side is this breaker rack here. I don't know what you would ask you about the inverters. I mean, they take DC and they make 120 volt AC that is super reliable. And we got two of them. We got two inverters, and they both go into the same header. Same wiring header, what do you say? Um, and there's also a bypass for the inverters. So the inverters have 480 going to them, so that you have a switch that you can just say, no, nah, no battery. We're gonna, but we still want to run all the 120 volt AC loads. So there's, Most of this stuff is in the DCS room downstairs. It's also a few emergency lights and outlets up here in the control room. And then there is a panel in the demon building, and there is a panel out in the AQCS. And so all the AQCS PLTs are supposed to be run off uh, these inverters. And all of the, uh, there's an ovation cabinet out there, ovation relay box, and that's powered off of it. One of its two power supplies is off of it. That might be it, guys. I think I'm spent. So yeah, two battery banks, and you see them when you go into the when you do your uh, checks on the battery. Room. What is it? You guys, is it part of rounds to do the uh, electrolyte checks? So you just go and check the levels. And yeah. See if the temperature is above the proper level. Temperature in the room and then the levels. And I think there's a hydrogen de detector outside the room. Exhaust fan running. Okay. Um, 
the hydrogen detector is because when those batteries are are heavily running with, uh, then it turns that water into hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, that just an alarm that goes from DCS though, and I don't know what you would do about it because if you need them, you need them, yeah. right? I should have said this earlier, but the Jeremiah thing is only boiler essentials for our test. Boiler essentials. Yeah. But we covered that. We Yes, yeah. we covered the... <laughs> but when you said something, he might not ask you that. I should have clarified that. That he's definitely not going to ask you that. Yeah. Because all he's really going to ask you about is Bear NCT back. 112 and 212. Rotor air heaters, lubeable pumps for the fans... Lubeable pumps for the uh, pulverizers. That's it. From that. generator to boiler essentials. Those. Oh, from generator to boiler essentials. Yes. Okay. And we covered that. We covered that. Yeah. Plus one. I'm done.